Welcome to Learning with UNP. In this session of Python for Data Science, we are going to understand about set methods that includes understanding about clear, copy, is disjoint, is subset, and finally understanding about is superset. Let's begin with understanding about set methods. Set in Python provide several methods to clear, copy, and compare sets for disjointedness subset and superset relationships. These methods allow for more advanced set manipulations and checks. These functionalities facilitate efficient set operations and comparisons in Python programming. First comes clear method. The clear method in Python sets is crucial for emptying the set efficiently without reallocating memory. This method removes all elements from a set resulting in an empty set. This method is useful when you need to reset a set's content without creating a new set object. Here is the syntax of it. This line clears all elements from the set my set leaving it empty. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize a set variable my set means initialize a set variable my set by assigning it a set of elements. Step 2. Use the clear method to remove all elements from the set means use the clear method on my set. This operation removes all elements from my set leaving it empty. This example demonstrates how to use the clear method in Python to remove all elements from a set. In this example, my set is initially assigned a set containing integers, string, and a float. When printed using the print statement, this set shows all its elements. After calling my set.clear method, all elements inside my set are removed. This operation leaves my set empty, as confirmed by printing it using the print statement. Let's execute this and check. As discussed, here is the output. Second comes copy method. The copy method creates a shallow copy of a set, returning a new set with the same elements as the original. This means it creates a new set that contains the same elements as the original set. This copy is independent of the original set, so any modifications made to the copied set won't affect the original set and vice versa. This method is useful when you need to work with a set but also want to keep a separate copy of it for comparison or other operations. Here is the syntax of it. This line creates a new set called new set that contains the same elements as the original set my set. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize a set variable my set means initialize a set variable my set with elements. Step 2. Use the copy method to create a shallow copy of the set means use the copy method on my set to create a shallow copy. Step 3. Assign the copied set to a variable new set means Assign the copied set to a variable new set. Now, new set contains the same elements as my set but is a separate set object. This example demonstrates how to create an independent duplicate of a set from another set using the copy method, enabling separate manipulation without affecting the original set. In this example, my set is initially defined with a set containing integers, string, and a float. When printed, this set displays all its elements. Subsequently, new set is created as a shallow copy of my set using the copy method. Both my set and new set now contain identical elements shown by printing the new set. Let's execute this and check. As discussed, here is the output. Third comes is disjoint method. The is disjoint method checks whether two sets have no common elements in common. It returns true if the sets are disjoint, that is, their intersection is empty and false otherwise. This method is useful for verifying that two sets do not share any elements. Here is the syntax of it. This assigns the boolean result of checking whether set 1 and set 2 have no common elements, that is, they are disjoint to the variable result. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize two set variables, set 1 and set 2, means initialize two set variables, for example, set 1 and set 2. Step 2. Use the is disjoint method to check if set1 and set2 have no elements in common means use the is disjoint method to check if set1 and set2 have no common elements step 3 assign the result to a variable result means assign the boolean result to a variable result if set1 and set2 share no common elements result will be true otherwise it will be false here are two examples demonstrating how is disjoint works in the first example, set1 contains elements 1, 2, 3 and set2 contains elements 4, 5, 6. Since these two sets have no common elements, the is disjoint method returns true, indicating that they are disjoint. In the second example, set1 contains 1, 2, 3 and 
set 2 contains 3, 4, 5. In this example, there is an overlap with the element 3 appearing in both the sets. Therefore, the is disjoint method returns false, indicating that set 1 and set 2 are not disjoint since they share at least one common element. The output of both examples is printed using the print statement. Let's execute this and check. As discussed, here are the outputs. Fourth comes is subset method. The is subset method checks whether all elements of one set are contained within another set. It returns true if the set is a subset of other set and false otherwise. This method is handy for verifying if one set is entirely contained within another set. Here is the syntax of it. This line assigns the boolean result of checking whether set1 is a subset of set2 to the variable result. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize two set variables set1 and set2 means initialize two set variables set1 and set2 with elements. Step 2. Use the is subset method to check if all elements of set1 are in set2 means use the is subset method to check if all elements of set1 are present in set2. Step 3. Assign the result to a variable result means assign the boolean result to a variable result. If set1 is completely contained within set2, result will be true, otherwise it will be false. Here are two examples demonstrating how E subset works. In the first example, set1 contains the elements 1, 2 and set2 contains 1, 2, 3, 4. Since every element of set1 which are 1, 2 is also present in set2, the E subset method returns true indicating that set1 is a subset of set2. In the second example, set1 contains 100, 200 as elements. Set2 contains 1, 2, 3, 4 as elements. None of the elements in set1 which are 100, 200 are present in set2. Therefore, the E subset method returns false indicating that set1 is not a subset of set2. The output is printed using the print statements in both the examples. Let's execute this and check. As discussed, here are the outputs. Fifth comes E's superset method. The E's superset method checks whether a set contains all elements of another set. It returns true if the set is a superset of the other set and false otherwise. This is useful for verifying if one set includes all elements of another set. Here is the syntax of it. This line assigns the boolean result of checking whether set1 is a superset of set2 to the variable result. Let's look at the pseudocode representation of it. Step 1. Initialize two set variables set1 and set2 means initialize two set variables set1 and set2 with elements. Step 2. Use the E superset method to check if set1 contains all elements of set2 means use the E superset method to check if set1 contains all elements of set2. Step 3. Assign the result to a variable result means assign the boolean result to a variable named result. If set1 contains all elements of set2, the result will be true. Otherwise, it will be false. Finally, here are two examples illustrating how E superset method works. In the first example, set1 contains elements 1, 2, 3, 4 and set2 contains 1 and 2 as elements. Since every element of set2 which are 1, 2 is also present in set1, the E superset method returns true, indicating that set1 is a superset of set2. In the second example, set1 contains 1, 2 as elements and set2 contains 1, 2, 3, 4. While set1 contains all elements of set2, set1 is not a superset because set1 does not include all elements that set2 contains. Therefore, the E superset method returns false. In both the examples, the outputs are printed using the print statement. Let's execute this and check. As discussed, here are the outputs. This is all about today's lecture. See you in the next lecture. Thank you.